Blakeney is a village in the district of the Forest of Dean, just under four miles south of Newnham. It was the site of a Roman villa dating to 75 AD and home to Thomas Sternhold, a groom of King Henry VIII's robes. The local manor house is Hayes Manor at nearby Viney Hill. I walked along Bridge Street, which is parallel to the busy A48, with the Blackpool Brook running in between. This led me to the High Street, where there are a couple of shops, one with a post office and a chip shop. Good morning. It's Thursday the 30th of May 2024, and today my walk starts and ends in Blakeney. Well, I used to come through Blakeney a lot. It was just one of those places that I tended to pass through though, whether it was on the buses years ago when I used to travel on the buses all over the Wye Valley and Forest of Dean, or whether it was when I used to just come here myself, you know, when I used to drive in my later years, but yeah, it's nice to be back in Blakeney again. I continued walking beside the A48, which started to climb as it curved to the left through Church Square. This is All Saints Church, which dates from 1820, and was a rebuild of an existing smaller early 18th century chapel. The bowl of the font is a 15th century water stoop, discovered near Gatscombe during the building of the South Wales Railway. I'm really in my element this week for getting inside churches. It's been wonderful. And I'm inside another wonderful church here in Blakeney. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that was a quick look around Blakeney and the church, which was lovely again. So I'll get on with the walk now then. From Church Square, I turned off the A48 to follow our road, taking the first footpath on the right, which crossed the fields. Re-meeting the road, I went right at a junction to follow a quiet lane signposted to Etlow. This is the remains of an old railway bridge. So, this would have carried the old Forest of Dean Central Railway. OK, 
can hear a tractor in the distance. I think he's going away from me though. <laughs> okay, so at this T-junction I go round to the right and then just along here should be a sunken track or a sunken lane and I turn down there. So this is the sunken lane. Just follow this to the end. My path eventually emerged onto a lane in the hamlet of Gatscombe. So I'm in Gatscombe, lovely little quiet backwater, although you're right beside the railway line there, and on the other side of the railway is the River Severn again. Yeah. Lovely. I think I've been here probably two or three times before now. Yeah. Really nice little quiet place. Let's see if I can see the river. Gatscombe is now a picturesque riverside hamlet, but was once a small port with a boat building industry. Forest timber was shipped from the quay here to Milford Haven and Portsmouth. Drake's house is named after Sir Francis Drake, who is said to have stayed here. It was probably the Boat Inn by the late 18th century, but was no longer a pub by 1901. There's another part of the River Severn. Yeah. So between me on this footpath and the river is the railway. So that's the railway that runs between Gloucester and Chepstow and then on to Newport and Cardiff. Yeah. And over that side is Sharp Ness. How many walkers come through here? I mean, I can't imagine you'd get lots and lots of walkers. I may be wrong, um, but this isn't one of the more touristy parts of Gloucestershire. One of the things I've noticed that on today's walk and yesterday's walk too, a lot of the styles are very, very old. So that sort of tells me that a lot of walkers don't use those footpaths. I'm guessing. If you did get more walkers, they'd have newer styles, or they'd have repaired styles at least, but I suppose if you don't get many walkers along these paths, no one's going to report the styles that need replacing. Uh, yeah, it's interesting really. Whoops. gate is clearly quite new. So maybe more people use these paths than I thought. My path kept close to the river and the railway as I continued heading south from Gatscombe. I passed through woodland, around a cornfield, 
and up and down rustic steps as I made my way towards the next settlement, and my views over the Severn were consistently impressive. After about three quarters of a mile, the path was approaching another lane. This is something I find confusing. Over the last few days I've noticed this whilst I've been doing my walks beside the River Seven. But I've seen lots of these footpaths sign for the Seven Way. But the Seven Way long distance footpath is on that side of the river. So what's all this about? Did the Seven Way once go along this side of the river and then they swapped it for that side? I don't know. Or is it a, a, just a different seven way? Answers on a postcard please. <laughs> yeah. I say it's not like a like an old sign either. It looks like quite a new sign. Anyway, let's get on. I've reached the country lane again now so I know where I'm approaching. Well, I've now reached Purton. This is also confusing because there's another Purton on the opposite side of the river. <laughs> anyway, this is Purton on the Lydney side of the Severn. Now, I think that big white house behind me, I'm sure that was either a pub or a hotel a long time ago. I seem to remember coming here as a very small child with family and we sort of, I seem to remember sitting in the, the beer garden, it probably was, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go back that way in a minute, but I just want to walk along here and take a little detour because there's some very important history that's attached to Purton. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be able to see much but I just think it's worth taking this little detour just in case. Now, on the opposite side of the river at Sharp Ness, there are two big pillars. Now they are the remains of a bridge. Um, that's, that part of the bridge went over the Gloucester and Sharp Ness Canal. But if I can see what I'm hoping to see, I might be able to talk a little more about that. This is another old railway bridge and this little bridge would have carried the old Seven and Y railway. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see what I want to see but what I don't want to do is end up straying from the public right of way and trespassing onto someone's private land so I'll just have a look and see. I don't think I'm going to be lucky. No, not what I was hoping for at all, but no worries. Yeah. So, just to give you a clue, that bridge that I've just sort of walked underneath, uh, to say carried the old Seven and Wild Railway, that line of trees down there more or less marks the line of the old embankment of the railway, and it's heading towards the river, so there's a big clue there. <laughs> anyway, you can see a nice view of the Seven from here anyway, that's nice. No problem. I'll just retrace my steps back into Purton. I returned to Purton, then took a path leading down to the riverside. So just now when I was looking at that line of trees that marks where the embankment of the old Seven and Wire Railway was, as it made its way towards the river here, well, it actually crossed a railway bridge. There used to be a railway bridge across the Severn here, and those two supports 
that I mentioned earlier on the opposite side of the river, they were part of that same bridge. So, yep, just here used to be the old Seven Railway Bridge. But it collapsed, or partially collapsed, and then it was eventually dismantled. I've got some notes on it. This was where the ill-fated Seven Railway Bridge came ashore on the west bank of the river. Built in 1879 to carry the Seven and Y Railway and its coal wagons across the river to the docks at Sharp Ness, the old Seven Railway Bridge was the site of a disaster in October 1960, when two barges collided with the bridge in thick fog, becoming entwined with and weakening the two central spans, which eventually collapsed. The stricken bridge was finally demolished in 1969. Well, you can't see anything now, because the tide is high. But, at low tide, apparently, you can actually see the remains of those two barges that collided with the old railway bridge. Yeah. They're actually still stuck in the sandbanks. Yeah. Very sad history. Interesting, but very sad. just following the lane on from Purton now and eventually this will lead me back into Blakeney. So this viaduct carried the proposed Purton steam carriage road. Now, only three arches of this viaduct were built and no carriages actually ever ran across it. <laughs> yeah. I carried on up the lane as it climbed gradually, levelling out as I arrived in the next settlement. This is Etlow. And what a lovely little place this is too. This part is Lower Etlow. I can imagine living in these houses here, you're going to get some superb views over the Severn. Some lovely houses in Etlow. Very nice indeed. Yeah. Wow. Feels quite isolated here, but you're not far from the main road. Quite near to Lydney if you want all the amenities. But yeah, some lovely, lovely places to live here. Wow. <laughs> so I think this bit, according to the map, is just Etlow, so we'll call that Middle Etlow. <laughs> And this bit is Upper Etlo. <laughs> so if you look on the map, Lower Etlo is south, Etlo is in between, and Upper Etlo is north. I'm back in Blakeney now then. So that's another walk completed. And it's been another lovely walk. I had a great week, I really have, and I've got one more walk to do, which is tomorrow. But now, I finish off with a lovely view of Blakeney Hill.